What's up guys, Grim here. If you left a comment in my Nightblade PvP guide that I did last week, then you are entered into a giveaway of six 30-day patron passes. Yes, yeah, so that means that we are going to have six different winners. I was also giving away a Rex, so that will be included in this giveaway. And to mix things up, I went ahead and posted on the official Rift forums that we were doing a giveaway, and I also gave everybody an option of making a post on the forums to where they will be entered into another of the 30 day patron pass giveaways. So yes, that's seven patron passes that we're giving away in addition to a Rex. And the winners are right there. Congratulations to everybody. We will be sending all of your patron passes to you just shortly, as well as the Rex to the winner of that. Last week we got so much in donations that it actually hit the ultimate goal that we were going for, which was $250, and we blew that out of the water with all the donations we got last week. And it did the ultimate goal in that I am going to do Warfront stressed in complete drag with a dress, makeup all that stuff i have never done anything like that in the past so this is going to be a weird experience i plan on doing a video of the whole process of me getting all the makeup put on me and all that craziness and if i have to go to the store to shop for anything i plan on recording that and making an irl video out of it before i end up doing the war fronts so it's coming up guys stick around it'll come up i'm sorry that it's delayed this long and what's weird is we got so much in donations last week that it just blew all expectations out of the water and that's what made it to where we did such a huge giveaway with this past week's uh, Nightblade video and then this week we got absolutely no donations at all and donations trigger giveaways so we had no donations but I'm going to do a giveaway anyway so this week it's whatever you want from the Rift store as long as it's within 5,000 credits and it has to be giftable. So if you'd like to be entered into this giveaway of anything you want from the Rift store, all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below this video with your character name and server, and you must be subscribed to the channel and hit that like button. The winner will be announced in the next weekend video. Good luck everyone. Last week we had pretty much the biggest supporter of our channel so far with Patrick making a couple of hundred dollar donations and he asked in his comments if we would make a stat optimization video so here it is guys. Now for those of you that don't want to endure a super long video on all the details on stats I will go ahead and summarize quite a bit of it real fast for you that way you don't have to endure the entire video if you don't want to. Alright for PvE all you have to do is if you're tanking you want to stack as much endurance as possible and guard is also a very important stat. Forget about everything else because guard is so important and endurance is so important so those are the two that you mainly want to go with with your tanking. If you're DPS you want to go up to the soft cap of 40% crit power and then put the rest into attack power or spell power depending on your class. Now if you have the ability to put a primary stat onto your weapon or whatever else with a rune, that is what you want to do whether it's strength or wisdom or whatever it is that applies to your class. Now if you have the ability to put a rune that puts a secondary stat such as attack power or spell power, that is what you want to do. So some runes will give you some strength as well as attack power, go with that. If you're a healer, it's all about the attack power or spell power because you want consistent heals, not these uh, chance crit heals. So you wanna go with as much attack power or spell power as you can. And of course, go with the uh, primary stats if you can on your uh, weapons and all that with runes. Now for PvP, the ball game changes completely because in PvE situations, you're gonna have all these raid buffs that are gonna increase your chance of critting. So you're not gonna have all that in PvP situations, which makes crit power not nearly as good. Now there are some specs that have a very high chance of critting, so the crit power would apply very well to those specs, 
But in general, you want to go with all attack power or spell power with a DPS spec or healing spec. The specs that you would actually want to go with crit power up to the soft cap of 40% is stuff like Shaman or Paragon that have a really high chance of critting. Shaman has a 100% crit chance at certain points. With pretty much every other spec in PvP, except for the ones that have a super high chance of critting, you want to go with attack power or spell power with pretty much all of them. Now the same applies with the PvP builds as it does the PvE in that you want to stack uh, your primary stat if you can on runes and stuff like that. If you are actually one of those rare people that wants to run a tank spec in PvP outside of CQ, then go ahead and go with the guard stat as well as endurance because those are the two primary stats that you're going to want. Enough of the short form now, let's go into the more detailed version of this guide. To start out with, we need to actually go over our primary stats and show exactly what they give your character. For the warrior class, every point of strength that you get actually equals into 0.75 attack power and 0.5 physical crit. One point of dex actually equals into 0.5. 2.5 attack power and 0.5 physical crit. So as you can see, stacking the primary stat is the way to go, but doing the secondary stat, such as dexterity for a warrior, is also going to be beneficial, just not as much as strength. Now on the rogue side, it's actually swapped around to where one dex equals 0.75 attack power and 0.5 physical crit, and one point of strength is 0.25 attack power and 0.5 physical crit. For the mage class, one point of intelligence equals 0.75 spell power and 0.5 spell crit chance. One wisdom point equals 0.25 spell power and 0.5 spell crit chance. For clerics, one point of wisdom equals 0.75 spell power and 0.5 spell crit chance. One intelligence equals 0.25 spell power and 0.5 spell crit chance. Now there is no cap on the main stats as in you can go as high as possible depending on your equipment, runes, and uh, abilities that you end up picking up. But with the other stats that we're going to go over, most of them have two types of caps. One is a soft cap in that once you hit it, every point that you put into that stat is going to have less of a return than it did before. And then there's a hard cap that once you hit that hard cap, you cannot go over that. So in theory, people are trying to hit the soft cap on the stats that they're trying to focus on, and then they go into other stats that will have more of a return since it's not going into the soft cap. As far as other stats, we're going to start out with crit power, and this is going to make your critical hits hit even harder. And once you hit the 3,120 points into crit power, you're going to hit that soft cap of 40%. And the hard cap is actually 50%, but we're not real sure exactly how many points it takes in order to hit 50%. We know it's over 7,000 though. Next we have attack power and spell power, and these basically make your attacks hit even harder. Now, as far as caps, there are no caps on attack power and spell power. So if you're playing a spec such as Warlord that has huge bonuses to attack power, the more you stack attack power, the more you're going to be able to get because there are no limits on it. No cap whatsoever. Go crazy with it. Now we have spell crit chance and physical crit chance. And this, of course, is going to increase your chances of doing a critical hit. Now the soft cap on these is 13,140 points or 45% chance. Now the hard cap is set at 60% chance. I'm not too sure exactly how many points it takes to hit that, but yeah, the hard cap is set at 60%. Now we're getting into the tanking stats and we're going to start out with guard, which guard reduces the amount of damage that you take and also the damage taken by your allies within a small radius. Now the soft cap on guard is at 10% and the hard cap is at 12%. Next we have dodge, which every point in dodge will increase your chance to avoid basic melee attacks. There is no soft cap on dodge, but there is a hard cap of 20%. And then there's block, which block works much like dodge, except for it has a higher chance of occurring per point, and it also stops a portion of the damage instead of all of it. The good thing is it actually works on a lot of attacks that cannot be dodged. The soft cap on block is 8,138 points or 45%, and that's what's going to be your soft cap. The hard cap is at 60%. 
Now as far as what stats to pick overall, let's go ahead and get into that. For PvE situations, a lot of this stuff is much different than PvP, so I'll separate the two into two different categories. As for tanking, there are two main stats that you want to go with, and that is Endurance and Guard. Now, most people say that Endurance is a little bit higher of a priority than Guard, but those are the two stats that you need to focus on. When it comes to DPS, you want to hit that 40% soft cap on crit power and then go all the rest into attack power or spell power. Now as far as healers, you want to go with all attack power or spell power because that's going to increase your sustained healing abilities. In PvP, the stat priorities change quite a bit in that in DPS specs, a lot of times you're not going to go with crit power because you do not have the raid buffs that PvE situations provide. In PvE, there's a lot of specs that are played that are used to increase your chance to do critical hits. And those classes are stuff like Beastmaster, Archon, Tempest, Bard, and Oracle. Now there's other classes that actually provide debuffs onto the target that will increase the chance of landing a critical hit on that target. And that's stuff like Beastmaster, Assassin, and Blade Dancer. Now when you look at all those specs that I just provided, how many of those are you seeing consistently in PvP? The answer is not very much at all. You may see one of the specs in a Warfront here and there, and you may even see one of them consistently, but they're not stacking all those raid buffs that's going to increase your critical hit chance. And a lot of those specs are not even going to spec into those abilities that's going to increase your critical hit chance in their PvP builds. So what that translates into is that you're going to have a much less chance of doing critical hits in PvP than you would in PvE, which makes it to where crit power is not as efficient as it is in PvE situations. For that reason, I recommend just about everybody stack as much attack and spell power as they can on their PvP builds, but there are exceptions to the rule, of course. A good example would be something like a Paragon Warrior that has a really high chance of landing critical hits. Now with something like that, you might want to go up to the 40% soft cap on your crit power and then go attack power afterwards. There's also like the Shaman Clerics that actually have a 100% chance of landing a critical hit with certain abilities. So to not go with crit power on builds like that would be insane because it's all about landing as much damage as possible in a bursty fashion. But then you have the opposite side of the spectrum such as like a reaver warrior that its dots are going to be increased damage with all the attack power that you put on it. True a lot of abilities and stuff are going to have a chance of doing critical hits which crit power will add to, but really in PvP, it's not as worth it. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this guide, and a lot of people will probably disagree with what I mentioned, but I have very good reasons for saying what I do. So follow this guide whenever it comes to your stats, I will lead you to victory, trust me. I want to throw in one last thing in that with PvE builds and stuff like that, it's pretty easy to think about how you want to distribute your stats, as in going for the crit power and all that. But in PvP, it's a little bit different in that builds change all the time. So depending on how you are running your particular character will change how you want to run that particular stat distribution. So if you're going with a lot of abilities that's going to hit harder in PvP, such as increasing your attack spell power, or that's going to increase your damage overall, then you might want to just focus on the attack power and spell power instead of going with anything crit chance or crit power. Now, if you're actually specking your character out to focus on uh, higher crit chance or your critical hits are going to hit harder, then yeah, you probably want to go with the soft cap on crit power. But it's all about how you actually spec out your character. So I wanted to end on that because I felt like I left it out in the earlier parts of the video. So hope you guys enjoy it. As usual, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.